It's your classic Conaline work van, dime a dozen. It's dirty and it's gonna need a little cleaning. That's where we're gonna start. Okay, yeah, we got all the uh, uh, we got all the construction cells pulled out. wasn't too bad this morning, and then we're giving it its first clean. So yeah, it's coming off, cleaning right up. Do it like brand new, and we're done with it. The first edition. This is the new seat covers we got. Always wanted these massage beads. We got those going. All right, so now it's coming out. Once I got the radio out, I uh, just use a couple flathead screwdrivers here. We're just gonna use a seven millimeter screwdriver again. Send it in, see if we can get some gauges working on our van. Visually, it's still very dirty. Cleaning up this armrest, starting to tear out some of the trim pieces. All right, we got the uh, floor all cleaned up. Okay, we got the sound ending installed. Next we're gonna do the ute uh, floor underlayment and then carpet. Jute. Jute. Um, I got the track cleaned out a little bit more. Found a bunch of nails and some saw blades. Yeah, there's what came out of the track right there. I wish I wouldn't have used the uh, template because I think I could have used a bit more in places like that, up in that corner. Alright, so I got the carpet super rough cut using the old template outside. And now I'm going to use an X-Acto blade and try to cut off the edges so that it uh, matches up perfectly. That's what it looks like with brand new carpet. Looks like it just came out of the factory. Installed here. Refinishing the rack, so basically just uh, ground off some of the rust with a wire brush and a drill and repainted it with some rust reformer and black spray paint. Dollars on Amazon. The nice thing about these AGM ones is they're sealed, so you don't have to worry. So we just got this uh, cardboard template cut out here, and this is what we're going to use to trace onto the 
one inch foam and then probably just use the one inch foam to trace onto the plywood uh, for fitting it in here around all the four features. There's the tracks for the car seat. Second seat we're gonna install there. We're already installed. So oh, figured out that this insulation knife is actually the best tool for cutting this insulation. We got all the uh, subfloors fit it in here. So there it is again, one inch of polyiso foam over with the uh, half an inch plywood over the top of that. <clears throat> and we got the seat fitted. So over here, the feet are gonna sit in there and this will be able to get covered up by the vinyl flooring. That's uh, pretty slick, shouldn't trip over that too much at all. Uh, floor is all bolted on here. So there, there it is, T-nuts, and they're just countersunk in so that they're level um, so that we can put the vinyl flooring on now. And we did uh, four T-nuts in the larger panels and two in that smaller back panel. Got the vinyl installed, pretty good. Even better over here. In the front, I used uh, this hemlock molding to make a uh, threshold over the flooring here and kind of lock the floating floor down. So that worked out really well. So we got these uh, frames built, three of them. Um, most of the structural support is going to come from the two by threes here, and these are just kind of laterals to hold hold the support together. Um, over here is going to be the battery box and electronics area. So I'm going to make a hinge that opens up here. I think the next step here is to make a frame that goes along here for that hinged area. So I'm going to have to make two more little frames here. Alright, so we kind of taped out over there where the sink is going to go. And then we got the bed frame in. These frames are bolted in on the uh, sides above the wheel wells and then the center frame is kind of its own unit and we're just letting the wood glue dry on these 2x2 two two, uh, cross beams. Okay, so we got the bed frame installed and we got the little doors done so just put some hinges on these side parts and over here we've got the jack and the jack stand and some tools and on this side I put in all the electrical yesterday, which, well, actually the last two evenings after work, I spent two very full evenings installing all the electrical. Um, it's a relatively simple electrical system. We just got our AGM uh, deep cycle battery over here. We got a battery isolator coming from the alternator. That's coming from this uh, four gauge wire up here that goes all the way up to the starting battery. And then I got my uh, lights and some and the fan wired up as well as an uh, inverter. And I'll do a separate video with more detail on how I did this uh, electrical installation. So anyway, that's all on that side. Here I just had to build this little cabinet so that I could mount the inverter and the light switch and things like that. They needed somewhere to mount. So I went ahead 
and built this little cabinet. And this is where our dishes are gonna be stored. I'll probably put some cabinet doors on the front of this. It's basically just a one by two with half inch plywood, trying to keep it light with uh, pocket screws holding it all together. So here we're just gonna, I'm gonna make this little cabinet for the water system. And uh, anyway, right now what I'm doing is uh, drawing how they're gonna go against the back here. So you kinda have to take it in small steps. You can either scribe along the contoured surface with a compass where you have one straight edge along the, the surface or you can just kind of draw little bits and cut them off as you go. Show me that pencil. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off just a little bit just to get it in there a little easier. So I'm going to start doing paneling. So I'm going to use 1 8 inch, it's called Luan or kind of a plywood uh, to panel everything and that way it doesn't waste up much space because we're trying to keep everything really tight as much as we can against this. More concerned about space than looks. Um, so we're going to use that for the paneling. So the hardest part is going to be cutting it out so that it fits over all these contours and things in here. Um, so that's going to take the most time. Uh, so I'm going to start out with a four foot by five foot panel and then uh, just make little uh, templates out of this paperboard for some of the contoured shapes that I need to cut out of it. And it'll probably take a couple times of bringing it in and out of here to get it fitted just right. Um, the nice thing with this Ford van is the uh, width from this ledge up to here is exactly four feet. So I'm hoping that I can just use the width of the board because they're four by eight sheets to set in here and not have to make that cut at all. So hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier, a little bit faster. That one bag turns into a lot more here. It's growing. It smells like heat. Smells like Ohio. Mm-hmm. Looks like. Nice. Okay, so we got the first panel fitted up here, and uh, it looks pretty good. So we kind of just opted to. Uh, hot glue. We just used some dabs of hot glue to hold the uh, sheep wool insulation up and then stuffed it in where we could. We did the same thing behind this panel so it's just hot glued on there and then the panel is really going to be what holds it on there. So now we're going to use some self-tapping screws. Um, some short ones look like these. There's the self-tapping screw that's what we're going to use to uh, hold it on. Um, probably just you know five or six of those holding it on to the metal frame back there. A couple other things, we got the brackets sticking out of the paneling, that's where the uh, sink is going to be held on. And then we just, yeah, contour it around everything else so that it fits in there pretty nicely. Took a few times of bringing it in and out. Okay, so for the roof we did uh, the string trick to hang up the insulation. It's not perfect, we're hoping the panel, so we cut panels to go along these frames right here. So hopefully the panel will kind of push it back up into place. And then you just want to make sure your wires are hanging through. So I cut holes for the lights, and then the wires will be hanging through those holes. All right, let's try to put the panel up. Uh, finished wall, I ended up moving the bracket on top of the wall, which made a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I think each one is only held in by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight um, self-tapping screws. So it didn't really take much to hold them on and they're really solid. And it's not they're not gonna be weight bearing or anything, so they're just for looks.
Okay, we got the lights all strung up here. Oh, I guess we're all back there. Update here, we're working on the upper cabinet here. So I got these cabinets all finished. And now we're gonna be installing one up here. So most of the weight is gonna be hanging on these. And these are just strips of wood, three quarter inch wood that I put up here with some uh, uh, longer self tapping screws, self drilling screws. And so those are gonna mesh in with the cabinet. I'll show you here in just a minute. So those wood strips that are already installed in the van are gonna be used to attach to this piece of wood along the back of this cabinet just with wood screws. And that'll make it easy to come in and out. And then I've got some other uh, wood strips down there to put a few more screws into. And I think I'm gonna do one more on the top here. And then I'm going to put the face on and shellac it and finish it up. Uh, other little cabinet that's gonna go next to that one down. We ended up spending just over $3,000 converting our van into a camper. So grand total is just over $6,000 for our simple camper van. Our next episode will be the final tour of the finished van. Please like and subscribe.